So what is a CRM? CRM is short for Customer Relationship Management. A CRM is a software tool that is used to improve lead conversions by centralizing sales processes and automating tasks to ensure the right actions are carried out accurately and at the right time. Salesforce, HubSpot, Pipedrive, and Copper CRM are a few examples of popular CRMs that can be used by micro, small, medium, and enterprise-sized businesses. But there are hundreds of pretty decent CRMs on the market. CRMs all generally have a similar structure of people records, company records, and deals or opportunities. People records are the most important because you communicate with people. You'll generally collect the person's name, email address, phone number, and may want to collect other information custom to your business, such as address and date of birth. If you sell B2B and your CRM is B2B focused, you'll have a company or organization records, which you'll link the people records to. You'll generally collect the company name, website, main phone number, address and again any other information such as enriched data for company size, number of employees and turnover. Qualified leads are generally converted into deals or opportunities, often with products or just a value which represents the projected revenue expected from that potential sale. In the deal, you'll collect other data specific to that prospect of sale such as the lead source, probability of conversion, details of documents and contracts sent, and the touch points through the sales process. Deals or opportunities are held in visible pipelines that mirror the key stages in the sales process, for example, lead in, qualified, contact made, demo scheduled, proposal made, and then either won or lost. The deal moves along the sales process in the pipeline and at each stage, the salesperson will have activities or tasks to perform representing the various touch points with the prospect. So how does a CRM actually work? I hear you ask. Using a CRM means leads are captured and recorded, there is visibility of the sales process, there is less scope for mistakes to be made, opportunities to be missed, and time to be wasted. There is also traceability to ensure if multiple salespeople are working on a deal, there is no crossover, and someone can easily pick up where the last person left off. Many CRMs have a systematic approach to workflows that helps to improve the process of converting a lead into a sale. The software allows you to manage leads, track communications, compile reports, and keep your team in the loop, whether they're working from an office or they're on the go. With the CRM, processing leads doesn't have to be confined to a nine to five schedule. Instead, in many CRMs, you can link a website chatbot or a web form to the CRM and any collected lead data, such as contact details, will be automatically inputted into the software. You can even pre-enter questions and answers into your chatbot, which will allow it to schedule meetings and leads on your behalf. This turns your business into a 24 seven lead generating machine. Detailed reports allow you to assess how your business is performing and to monitor whether improvements are taking place. With many CRMs, you can set individual team and business-wide targets and will be automatically provided with detailed reports that are easy to digest. You're even able to track expected outcomes versus actual outcomes as data is entered so that you'll be able to see whether improvements and changes are required. Many CRMs have features such as meeting scheduling, allowing your prospects and customers to book meetings in your calendar using a link, email templates, allowing your team to send personalized yet templated emails, avoiding copying and pasting, Email service integrations, allowing you to send and receive emails straight from within the CRM, which are logged on relevant records. Workflow automation, allowing you to automate repetitive tasks. Task management, allowing you to stay on top of scheduled activities. Forms for data collection, essential for your sales process. Custom fields, which allow you to store data that you collect, which is specific to your sales process and multiple pipelines to allow you to manage different sales processes in the business. So how do you go about finding an appropriate CRM for your organization? 
It's important to remember that not every CRM will be appropriate for your company. What works for one will not always work for another, and the most commonly used or well-known CRMs may not be suitable for your use case. It's always best to start with making a list of key requirements for the CRM by holding a brainstorming session with all the key stakeholders and users. A good place to start with your research is checking a few comparison sites such as GetApp or Captera. When you're performing your search, you'll want to remember a few things. Bear in mind that most CRMs are built either for B2B or B2C sales, but often can be adapted to both scenarios. Generally, B2B specific CRMs are more likely to be adaptable to a B2B scenario because they include the company or organization records. Always check to see how extensive the CRM's app marketplace is. If there are many integrations, this demonstrates the investment the SaaS provider has put into connecting the CRM with other tools. You may also want to check if they have an open API, which will allow you to do more when you're ready to customize your connections with other apps and automate tasks. On the same note, you'll also want to know if the CRM integrates with connector tools such as Zapier or Integromat. And we'll discuss that a little bit later. Also assess what level of support the SaaS provider of the CRM offers and whether or not it's available in your time zone. Now, once you've chosen the right fit CRM, there are a few things that you'll want to do to make sure you put in place a workable CRM. Start out by assessing all of your data collection methods for inbound leads and how you'll get them into the CRM as efficiently as possible. For example, you want to think about embedding CRM forms into the company website and automating the creation of leads from relevant sources. You also want to think about the method you use for adding outbound leads to the system, such as importing lists or adding them on the fly. Now take time to understand your required data structure and what standard or custom fields you'll need to store data you collect. Also understand how best to segment data in the CRM. So for example, is a person record a lead, a customer, or some other type of contact? You'll also want to spend time with the core team of users to strategize how you will structure your pipelines. You'll want to ask questions like, do we have different sales processes that require us to have different pipelines? What stages will represent the top level milestones in each pipeline? And what activities will represent the key touch points for each stage? Then once your CRM architecture is complete, before you import any data, ensure that it's cleansed and enriched to make sure you've got the right data in the system. Remember, dirty data equals a dirty system. Finally, prepare consistent training documentation or videos for each member of the sales team to ensure consistent good habits ongoing. So let's now have a look at a, an example of a CRM. So I'm going to be using Pipedrive in this example, and I just want to show you some basic uh, structure so that it becomes clear based on what we've talked about already. So we've got people records and if we just use this list here uh, and use John Smith as an example, we've got different fields in here that which are generally standard fields, things that you want to collect, collect about the contact who, as I mentioned earlier on, are the people that you're communicating with. So phone number and email address. And something that may not be relevant to everybody would be date of birth, for example. And one thing that's interesting in most CRMs is that when you add custom fields in, you should be able to add in based on different types of fields that you want. So um, in the date of birth, for example, you could put a date field in. If you wanted to have um, a drop down list of single options, um, you could do that as, as well. So um, this is the information that we've collecting for our contacts within this particular scenario. You'll also see um, that we have the organization. So um, we'll just use this particular one as an example. And we're collecting, this one's deleted, but ignore that just for the purposes of the demo. We're collecting address and we're collecting other information as well here. And we can also add in custom fields 
where necessary. And you can see also that John Smith is connected to test company. Now, if we go to um, how we're dealing with leads and then deals and opportunities, a lot of CRMs have got a leads module where you process the information. Then when they become qualified, that is when you um, convert them to a deal, which gets pushed into a sales pipeline. So in this example, we've got a qualified contact made, demo scheduled, proposal made and negotiations started for our different deal stages. And we've got a couple of examples of deals in here. And if we look at the Star Agency Limited one, um, in this example, we've got John Smith associated with this uh, deal, as well as Star Agency Limited, which are the two companies John is associated um, with this one, um, as well as the Star Agency Limited. Um, we'll, we've also got various custom fields for information that we need to collect for the deal. And you'll notice as well, as we've navigated through person and organization records, that in each place, we've got different things like notes, activities, proposed times, call, email files, documents, invoice. These, these two are specifically for the deal. Um, but you can see that you can add notes. So you can see here, spoke to John and book demo call. Um, we can create activities. So um, you can see here there's an activity that's been uh, um, performed already. Um, so chase up that demo call. And then we've actually got a call, a demo call that's booked in with John Smith um, for um, tomorrow, or Monday. Um, you'll also see that we can propose time. So this would be for, for sending um, information to the person about uh, what availability we've got um, in a calendar type of booking method, um, send, making calls within the CRM, as well as sending emails, attaching files, as you can see here, and documents and invoicing if you've got um, those integrations. Um, we'll, we can also see that we've got the details of the organization and also the details of, of John Smith. And another thing to point out is that we've also got a way of segmenting the deals within the pipeline. So we've got two different options and you'll see within the pipeline that we can color code within here. Um, one thing that we've also got as well is product. So we can associate a figure with a deal as well as put in specific products with pricing to calculate the deal value. Um, so there are a few other things within Pipedrive, as we've mentioned, and in many other CRMs. So activities, um, scheduling, so that you can actually see um, a list of different activities that you've got and you can stay on top of what you need to do. Sending emails with templates, uh, product listing. There's also a reporting section and uh, workflow automation so that you can build in specific automations so that you can uh, stay on top of uh, the repetitive tasks. So that's just a general overview. And um, we'll next be moving on to how to automate the sales process. So now that we have the CRM in place, you'll want to supercharge your sales process with automation. Many CRMs have workflow automation functionality, allowing you to automate a range of tasks that will help you to save time and give you the chance to focus on other important aspects of your role. For example, you can set up workflows to automatically send a personalized email to a contact when a sale is made or certain progress has been achieved. Likewise, if new lead contact details have been added, then workflows can automatically create a new deal within the system. There are multiple benefits to this, including the fact that there is less room for human error when entering the data, and the fact that you don't have to take the time to manually complete these tasks. With several processes being completed automatically, you'll know that you're making the most of your time in all aspects of the business, especially those that require the human touch. Now, although using a standalone CRM is a massive upgrade on manually making use of numerous apps by multiple members of the sales team, 
there's room for a further improvement. Keeping the rest of your team working in sync with your sales team can be the difference between retaining a client or not. With that in mind, there are several processes that remain outside of the CRM that can be automated to keep things running smoothly. Applications relating to marketing, project management, and invoicing are just a few examples of processes that tend to continue to be managed outside the scope of the CRM. However, by combining the CRM with these tools that it has native integrations available with, which by the way are generally listed in the CRM's app marketplace or ecosystem of integrations, you can connect your sales process with the other business processes to automate your entire sales process and this is the key to producing better results for the business. Native integrations have generally been built to accomplish specific basic tasks such as adding a new contact to your email marketing tool or syncing data between the two tools. However, there might have been situations when you'll want to create more custom tasks where the native integration does not allow you to do so without the need for employing a developer to build you an integration. In this case, you can use a connector tool such as Zapier or Integromat to accomplish this. So just using the example of Zapier, Zapier is a service that allows you to connect thousands of different apps to automatically carry out tasks. By creating a workflow of your choosing, you can preset occurrences that will trigger several apps to start working on your behalf. The advantages of this are numerous. So firstly, as the process is automated, you'll be freeing up time to concentrate on other important things. You'll also know that data is being entered correctly, that the team members are being kept up to date, and that you're responding to leads in a prompt manner. It is also, though, very important to remember that you should always assess native integrations to see if they're fit for your needs before deciding to use a connector tool like Zapier. More customization is required and with a connector tool, but it does significantly open up the possibilities. So how does Zapier work with your CRM? As long as your CRM has an integration with Zapier, it allows you to connect it with over 3000 other apps, allowing you to automate all kinds of tasks. For example, Zapier can also be used to link Facebook lead ads to your CRM, automatically inputting lead data from Facebook lead ads into the system, which could then push through notifications to team members about a new lead that's in Slack. Or if your CRM is set to automatically add lead contact data to its system when a web form is filled in, you could set this as a workflow trigger to then add those same details to a MailChimp or active campaign list, ready for automatic follow-up emails to be sent out. Likewise, a new deal or opportunity added to your CRM could be set as a trigger for Gmail to send emails out to notify your team members. If you prefer to use Slack for team updates, then this would replace Gmail in the workflow. You could then add new tasks to a project management tool such as Todoist or Trello and new opportunities to a Google Sheet. You can trigger a custom PDF sales proposal to be created when a deal reaches a certain stage in the CRM. This can be as simple as data passing from your CRM to a Google Doc template, which performs a mail merge to create the document and then automatically send the proposal out using your email platform. Or you can use a bespoke proposal app such as Pandadoc and connect this to your CRM using Zapier to automate the creation of a proposal. Another example would be to automate the touch points in a structured sales cadence, which can then help you to convert more leads into sales because you won't be relying on manual processes to trigger a touch point. We can trigger a series of emails, SMS texts, and voicemail messages when new deals are created in the CRM. You can build in time delays that hold the, hold the um, automation from progressing until after a certain period of time has passed, so for example, three days. Then you can be sure you're spacing out communications to clients in a structured, strategic way. 
To save time and potential data errors, once a deal or opportunity has reached a certain stage in the CRM, a workflow could trigger that automatically creates new contact records and generates new invoices for your customer in the accounting system that you use, such as Xero or QuickBooks Online. Truly, the possibilities are almost endless when it comes to connecting your tools and automating tasks with Zapier. But one thing is certain, that is the fact that combining it with your CRM takes centralization and automation to the next level. Reducing the chances of errors being made, tasks being skipped and increasing the response time to new leads will pave the way to a smoother experience for your business and potential clients. All the time saved that can be used to focus on other ways to increase business growth rather than to spend on manual data entry and other repetitive tasks that could otherwise hold you and your team back. So learning how to automate your CRM is an investment in the business which is will obviously boost profits and improve client management.